official petitioner for the cause of Father Willie. That means that the association is responsible for the cause, including promoting it and financing it. This is an historic event. It is something that many people have longed to see happen over many years. And it is also the first time a canonization cause has been opened in Ireland in over a quarter of a century. We want to extend our deepest gratitude to Bishop Dinehan for agreeing to initiate the cause in the diocese and to the clergy of the cathedral for facilitating this evening's events. I want to acknowledge the presence here today of the members of Father Willie's two families. Firstly, to his natural family. There are several members of Father Willie's extended family with us today notably grandchildren of some of his siblings. I also want to acknowledge the members of Father Willie's spiritual family, the Society of Jesus, who are present here today as well. Our thanks to them, and in particular to the Provincial Father, Father Leonard Maloney for their encouragement and support for the cause. Following Vespers and the opening session, there is a cup of tea in St. Mary's School Hall, which is to the right of the cathedral when you exit the main door. You are all very welcome to join us there. The Father Willie Doyle Association has a table at the back of the cathedral and in the school hall. You can sign up to join our mailing list at these stands. You will find prayer cards and leaflets about Father Willie. Please feel free to take some to give to your family and friends. We also have some books about Father Willie available to purchase. Christmas isn't too far away, so even if you have read the book yourself already, they would make an excellent gift for others. In your Vespers booklet, you should also find a small envelope. If you're able to assist the cause with any financial help, this will be very gratefully received and very carefully used. You can give the envelopes to our volunteers at the stands. Whether you can help us financially or not, we ask everyone to assist this work with your prayers and to stay in touch with the process via our website, willydoyle.org.
You're very welcome to our celebration here this afternoon. I join with Bishop Smith in welcoming the archbishops and bishops who will join us for Vespers this evening. Father Doyle's family, whom we're delighted to have with us, the members of the Father Willie Doyle Association, who have worked hard to bring Father Doyle's cause to where it is today. A welcome to, to Father Shield and the students of the Jesuit, the students and staff from Clongo's Wood, who have joined us, the other Jesuits and Father Leonard Maloney, their provincial, who is giving the homily this afternoon. I welcome the head chaplains to the Irish and British Defence Forces, people from around the world who are watching on webcam and who have devotion to Father Doyle. The members of the Cathedral and Diocesan Choirs under Gerard Lillis and Jim Walsh, and as I say, all of you who have devotion to Father Doyle who have joined us today. The Feast of Christ the King is a special feast here, given that this cathedral was the first to be dedicated to Christ the King. Let us begin our ceremony this evening by giving praise to Christ our King and praying for the coming of that kingdom among us. O oh God, come to our aid. O oh Lord, make us to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be.
for he must be king until he has put all his enemies under his feet. And the last of the enemies to be destroyed is death, for everything is to be put under his feet. Though when it is said that everything is subjected, this clearly cannot include the one who subjected everything to him. And when everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will be subject in his turn to the one who subjected all things to him, so that God may be all in all. to you all for this invitation to say a few words here in the Cathedral of Christ the King on this the feast day of Christ the King. In the everyday world the meaning of the word King is familiar to us. The news of Prince Charles becoming King after the death of his mother recently was a global event. But the kingship of Christ is a very different thing from what our world understands. It is not kingship as we know it. As we heard in the gospel from the Mass this morning or last evening, Jesus' crucifixion surrounded by the two thieves. Jesus, in those last dark hours of his life, Christ's kingship remains an uncanny thing. His crown is made of thorns. His throne is the executioner's cross. When he allows himself to be mocked, tortured, and bled dry, his kingship is not in suspension. It is being exercised. His utter self-emptying, his perfect sympathy with human suffering, is a kingly act a divine act. God's thoughts are not ours. The war that Father Willie Doyle served in as a chaplain was an imperialist war where rulers sent young men and sometimes young women to their deaths to try and preserve their own earthly kingdoms. They were sacrificed on the altar of the greedy and the powerful. Get a good insight from that in the new version of the movie All Quiet on the Western Front from the German perspective on our side, we were meant to be the good guys. We were, I know, independent and outside of it. But we insisted that people would die up until and even beyond the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. In Father Willie's own words, from a letter of the 5th of August, 1917, just days before his death, at the Battle of Passchendaele, quoted in Dr. Pat Kenny's heartfelt book about Father Doyle, To Raise the Fallen. I quote, 
my poor brave boys. They are lying now out in the battlefield, some in a little grave dug and blessed by their chaplain who loves them, who loves them all as if they were his own children. Others, still and stark, with staring eyes, hidden in a shelf, shell hole where they had crept to die, while perhaps in some far-off thatched cabin, an anxious mother sits listening for the well-known step and voice that will never gladden her ear again. Father Willie Doyle wanted to love and to serve Jesus from an early age. And that desire spilled out in loving service of those young men with no thought of his own well-being or survival. He never asked what creed or class they were, what faith they had. He simply stayed with them, sharing communion, confession, or just his presence. As one report in the Daily Express of 1917 put it, he went forward and back over the battlefield with bullets whinning around him, seeking out the dying and kneeling in the mud beside them to give them absolution, walking with death with a smile on his face. His familiar figure was seen and welcomed by hundreds of Irishmen who lay in that bloody place. The life and death of Father Willie Doyle is a stark, shining witness to the radical and demanding call that our Christian faith makes of us. We tread different battlefields, but are similarly charged to live by the standards that much of the world does not value to walk in solidarity with the poor, to give hospitality to the stranger and the migrant, to ensure justice and atonement for survivors of abuse. Such a painful reality out of our church history. And also to visit the sick, to forgive our enemies, whoever they may be. It is a tough call, but people like Father Willie Doyle can be our inspiration. And the gospel reading and the other readings indeed that we've heard this evening and that we would have heard in mass earlier, assure us that the radical kingship of Christ means that the Lord is with us all the way in total solidarity with our human suffering, filling us with the grace and power of his love unto death. Mystery. So I am very grateful to Bishop Dinehan for launching the canonization cause of Father Willie Doyle, SJ, tonight. And grateful to Dr. Patrick Kenny, to Pat, who has championed Father Willie's cause with the Irish Jesuit province, which is delighted to support with Father John Hogan of the Meath Diocese as the postulator. I think also of those in Rome. This has been a long process getting even to this point. Think of Father Pasquale Saboyada for instance, but one. May their work be blessed. 
and may you all be blessed. May you all be blessed here, as Father Doyle said he was, on the bloody battlefield with, and I quote his own words, a strange and confident feeling of trust and security in the all-powerful protection of our blessed Lord. Promise to 
to Christ our King, who is first in all things and in whom all thing, things exist, let us confidently pray. Lord Jesus Christ, our King and our Shepherd, gather your flock from every corner of the earth. Protect it in your fresh and fertile pastures. Lord, I hear Jesus, our leader and saviour, make all people your own. Heal the sick, seek out the lost, preserve the strong, bring back the strayed, reunite those who are scattered, and give new hope to the downhearted. Lord, may you Jesus, eternal judge, when you hand over your kingdom to your father, Remember us, your faithful people. Let us take possession of the kingdom prepared for us since the foundation of the world. Lord, 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 Lord. Jesus, Prince of Peace, remove from the hearts the greed that leads to war. Speak words of peace to your people. Lord, 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 Lord. Jesus, heir of all nations, bring all humanity to the kingdom of your church, entrusted to you by your Father. Move all people to acknowledge you as the head in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Lord, Jesus, firstborn of all creation and first to be born from the dead, bring all the departed to the glory of your resurrection. Almighty ever-living God, it is your will to unite the entire universe under your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the King of heaven and earth. Grant freedom to the whole of creation and let it praise and serve your majesty forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
very welcome to this first public session of the diocesan inquiry into the life and virtues of the servant of God, Father William Doyle, SJ. This evening, Bishop Dinahan formally opens Father Doyle's cause and the members of the diocesan tribunal which will oversee the diocesan inquiry and the postulator of the cause take their oaths of office. I now call upon the postulator, Father John Hogan, to read the libellus, the formal petition requesting the initiation of the cause. Your Excellency, I, Reverend John Hogan, legitimately constituted postulator by the Father Willie Doyle Association, actor of the cause and beatification and canonization of the servant of God, William Joseph Gabriel Doyle, professed priest of the Society of Jesus, ask in the name of the same actor and in conformity with the apostolic constitution Divinus Perfectionis Magister and the Norme Servande of the Dicastri for the Causes of Saints, introduce the cause of the servant of God in your diocese. The servant of God, William Joseph Gabriel Doyle, was born on the 3rd of March 1873. He was baptized at the local, local parish church, the Church of the Assumption Dawkey, on the 13th of March. William's early years were spent at the family home in Melrose, Dawkey. The family was marked by a Catholic piety that formed the hearts and minds of the children. As a child, William was particularly precocious when it came to faith and works of charity. He was known to help the family servants in their work, rising earlier than them to clean out fireplaces and light the fires to ease their workload. As he grew older, his charitable activities saw him frequent the homes of the poor on Dawkey Hill 
bringing them food and cleaning their houses. Following secondary education at Ratcliffe College, Lancashire, England, he discerned a vocation to the priesthood. He was received into the Society of Jesus on the 31st of March, 1891, at St. Stanislaus College, Tullabeg, Rahan, County Offaly. While in novitiate, he offered his life to Christ through the hands of Mary as a martyr. Following his first profession, on the 15th of August, 1893, he served as prefect in Clongoeswood College, Kildare, and teacher in Belvedere College, Dublin. He undertook philosophical studies in Belgium and Stonyhurst, England, and theological studies at Milltown Park, Dublin. He was ordained priest on the 28th of July, 1907. He made his tertianship at Tronchien, Belgium, and professed final vows on the 2nd of February, 1909. He was appointed to the Jesuit mission team in Britain and Ireland, and from 1909 to 1915, carried out an intense and successful mission as preacher, spiritual director, and confessor. His personal spiritual life was marked by intense prayer and penances conducted under the supervision of his superiors. In his writings, he manifested a desire for holiness, seeking to serve souls and offer his life and work as a reparation for the sins of priests. In his pastoral ministry, he impressed people with his gentleness, holiness and gift of preaching. He was sought after as a guide of souls and he directed many through correspondence. In 1914, he helped found a poor Clare monastery in Cork. He was particularly devoted to providing retreats for working men and sought to establish a retreat centre for them. He published a number of pamphlets, including one on the rubrics of the Mass, another on retreats for working men, and on vocations. His writings on vocations proved enormously influential and have assisted innumerable men and women to discern vocations to priesthood and religious life even to the present day. With the outbreak of the First World War, William offered himself for service as a military chaplain. This was accepted in November 1915. William's motivation was to continue his ministry to working men, many of whom were volunteering for service in the army, and to offer himself as a pastor to these men as they faced the real possibility of death each day. In January 1916, he embarked for the front and carried out a difficult and heroic pastoral ministry. In the midst of the horrors of war, he brought consolation, hope and courage to the men in his care, both Catholic and Protestant. And he was regarded by many as a living saint. He took frequent risks to save men on the battlefield and spent himself in administering the sacraments to the dying and burying the dead. Embracing the extreme deprivation of life in the trenches, he bore them with serenity, patience and joy, encouraging the soldiers and teaching them the faith. Though awarded a number of military distinctions, including the military cross, with humility he was content to carry out his duties for the love of Christ and to be a slave to those he served. William brought Christ to the men caught up in battle. This was also true for those on the other side of the conflict. William showed the same love, pastoral tenderness and concern for German soldiers captured by the Allies, so much so that many of them came to admire him. William detested the war, deplored the senseless loss of life, sought peace and reconciliation by caring for the souls and the well-beings of the soldiers, maintaining his wit and sense of humour. While William offered pastoral service and sacraments to Catholic soldiers, he was also concerned for the souls of Protestant soldiers and offered them what service he was permitted to do with fidelity to the rules of the church. He was ecumenical in his love and concern for all souls. In August 1917, during the Battle of Passchendaele, William was extremely busy as casualties and fatalities were high. 
He was frequently without rest, yet his stamina held out. The years of penance and mortification bore fruit in making him fit for his ministry. Another chaplain was due to relieve him, but did not arrive. So William had to remain at the front and continue his work. On the 16th of August, 1917, in the midst of intense fighting in which large numbers of soldiers were killed, William spent the day on the battlefield under constant and great risk to his life, tending to the dying and trying to rescue the wounded. In the late afternoon, two Anglican soldiers from Ulster, Second Lieutenants Charles Marlowe and Arthur Green, had fallen in the heat of battle and lay wounded. William saw them from the trench, and even though he recognised the grave danger as shells were raining down upon the troops in that part of the battlefield, he ran to assist them. As he was trying to drag them to a shelter for safety, a German shell hit them and all three were killed outright. Soldiers from his battalion ran to him but found that he was dead. They either noted where his body lay or moved it to a place they thought safer to be recovered when the fighting eased. Later, when they returned to the spot, they could not find the body. It had either been hit by another shell, completely destroyed, or other soldiers discovered it and buried it somewhere. Testimonies following William's death from both Catholics and Protestants, soldiers and their commanding officers, speak of his heroism, profound holiness, and complete dedication to his mission and to the souls in his care. Immediately devotion to him emerged. This was particularly evident among soldiers he served and their families, who held him in great veneration, as well as those who knew him as a preacher and guide of souls. As news of his heroism on the battlefield spread, devotion also emerged among the faithful. Professor Alfred O'Rahilly's biography of William, which included many details of his private spiritual life, was published in 1920 running through five editions and multiple translations. Other biographies followed, and there were calls from around the world for his cause to be opened, and this call has been renewed frequently since the 1920s to our own day. Numerous Catholics and non-Catholics, clergy, religious and laity, have been influenced by William's life, ministry and heroism, including a number of saints and blesseds, whose own sanctification was marked by his example and spirit, including Saint Jose Maria Escrivá and Saint Teresa of Calcutta. This petition to open the cause of beatification and canonization is submitted to Your Excellency under the category of heroic virtues. William strove to reach holiness through the observance of his consecration in the spirit of humility and through an intense offering of life in service to God and neighbour, assisted and deepened by prayer and the practice of self-control and works of mortification. His virtues were manifested externally by his constant dedication to his duties, his unwavering faith, his charity and gentleness to those he met and served, and his orientation towards hope in every situation and difficulty. Throughout his life, William sought to love God and his neighbour above himself. His life of ministry saw many manifestations of charity, as he made himself available to all who sought his help, tended souls with a gentle heart, and made every effort to reach the lost. William's final act on the 16th of August 1917 saw him offer his life to save two soldiers. William manifested many other virtues in his life. At the heart of them was humility. His humility was Christ-like. He did not seek honour for himself, nor reward for what he did. He attributed all his efforts and all his successes to Christ. His sense of humour was the means through which he sought to cover up his virtues and growth in holiness, a method of self-deprecation. This humour revealed another prominent aspect of his personality, joy. Possessed of a warm humanity, never surrendering to despondency, William was a witness to joy in his life, though he often suffered and experienced difficulties. 
His spiritual writings reveal that this joy emerged from a profound love of Jesus Christ, a deep union with him, and the desire to make Christ present in his life and in the lives of those he served. We believe the life and death of Father William Doyle SJ have immense importance for the church, both in Ireland and universally. He is a good and holy model of the priestly life. He is an example of a committed religious who was faithful to his vows, living the evangelical counsels with humility and joy. He sought holiness, knowing that all disciples of Christ are called to be saints. And that holiness was the ultimate act of fidelity to Christ and the manifestation of God's will for all. William is a model, example, and spiritual mentor for those suffering with mental health issues due to his own experience and recovery from a psychological breakdown in his youth. His work for vocations is inspiring. His desire to offer his life, penances, and even his death as a reparation for the sins of priests can resonate with the church in these times. His love and service of German soldiers and his ministry as a chaplain offered the church an example of love for one's perceived enemies and one who can be seen as a servant of peace and reconciliation. He is also a model of true ecumenism. The actor wishes to petition Your Excellency and the Holy See to open a cause under the category of heroic virtues. As his reputation for sanctity remains among the faithful, despite the many decades since his death, and belief in his intercessory power is strong, as witnessed by numerous people who continue to seek his prayers and help, together with the evidence of his virtue and heroic death, we request that his cause be introduced. I, Thomas Deanham, Bishop of Neath, accepting the request of the Reverend John Hogan, legitimately constituted postulator of the Father Willie Doyle Association, who on the 25th of January 2022 asked us with the Suplex Libelist to introduce the cause for the beatification and canonization of the servant of God, Father William Doyle, after having obtained the unanimous consent of the Irish Episcopal Conference and the granting of Nihil Obstet of the Sacred Dicastery for the causes of saints, hereby decree according to Norme Servande number 11b and the instruction Sanctorum Mater, Article 43, Paragraph 3, inform the diocesan community of me that I intend to introduce the cause of beatification and canonization of the servant of God, Father William Doyle, professed priest of the Society of Jesus. In accordance with the canonical provisions relating to the case, Considering the serious responsibility that this decision entails, I formally invite all those who are aware of any matters relating to the reputation of holiness of the said servant of God, even those which may be discordant, to submit it to me, the undersigned, or to the postulator. All those who are in possession of writings, manuscript, diaries, letters, and any other document of Father William Doyle S.J. are invited to place them at the disposal of the postulator of the cause, at the Episcopal Curia in Monangar. If the owner of these documents and or writings intends to keep the original, he will be able to show a duly authenticated copy. This edict will remain posted for a period of one month in the Episcopal Curia of Monangar, in the Cathedral of Christ the King Monangar, and in the churches of the Diocese of Meath, given at Monangar on the 25th of October, 2022. Decree accepting the libellus. I, Thomas Dinehan, Bishop of Meath, having regard to the request of 25th of January 2022, with which the Reverend Father John Hogan, postulator of the cause of beatification and canonization of the servant of God, Father William Doyle, S.J., professed priest of the Society of Jesus, in the name of the actor of the cause, the Father Willie Doyle Association, asks for the initiation of the cause, having obtained the positive opinion of my confreres in the Episcopate on the 1st of April 2022, 
obtained the authorization of the Holy See on the 1st of September 2022 and made the necessary inquiries with the faithful of this diocese with edict of 27th October 2022. I hereby accept the libellus of request and decree the beginning of the cause of beatification and canonization of the servant of God, Father William Doyle, SJ, professed priest of the Society of Jesus. Not being able to deal directly with the investigation of the inquiry, I hereby appoint the Reverend Father Joseph Gallagher, Vicar General, Parish Priest, Episcopal Delegate, the Reverend Father Michael Cahill, Parish Priest, Promoter of Justice, the Reverend Father Paul Crosby, Parish Priest, Notary. I order the Chancellor of the Diocese to inform the officials of the inquiry of their appointment so that they appear on 20th of November 2022 at the Cathedral of Christ the King in Mullingar in order to participate in the first opening session of the inquiry and take an oath to faithfully fulfil their assignment and to keep the secret of their office. Given at Mullingar, the 25th October 2022, Thomas Deanahan, Bishop of Meath, and notarised by Reverend Father Paul Connell, Chancellor of the Diocese. My Lord Bishop, do you confirm this decree and these appointments? I invite you then to take the oath of office. I, Thomas Deanahan, Bishop of Meath, swear to fulfil with fidelity and diligence the task that falls to me in the inquiry on life and heroic virtues, as well as on the reputation of holiness and signs of the servant of God, Father William Doyle, professed priest of the Society of Jesus. I also swear to preserve professional confidentiality with regard to all those matters which I may learn during the inquiry, and not to speak of them except with the officials of the tribunal named in this process. I also swear not to accept any gift that might be offered me because of this present process. So help me God. I now call upon Father Joseph Gallagher, Episcopal Delegate to the Diocesan Inquiry, to take his oath. I, Reverend Joseph Gallagher, Vicar General and Parish Priest, Episcopal Delegate of the Inquiry on Life and Heroic Virtues, as well as on the fame and holiness and signs of Servant of God, Father William Doyle, professed priest of the Society of Jesus, swear to fulfill faithfully and diligently the task that has been entrusted to me in this inquiry, and not to say or do anything that directly or indirectly could attack the truth or justice or may limit the freedom of witnesses. I also to preserve professional confidentiality with regard to all those matters which I may learn during the inquiry and not to speak of them, except with the officials of the tribunal named in this process. I also swear not to accept any gift that might be offered me because of this present process. May God assist me and these sacred scriptures on which I place my hand.
I now call upon Father Michael Cahill, promoter of justice to the diocesan inquiry, to take his oath. In the name of God, I, Reverend Michael Cahill, parish priest, promoter of justice of the inquiry on life and heroic virtues, as well as on the fame of holiness and signs of the servant of God, Father William Doyle, professed priest of the Society of Jesus, swear to fulfill faithfully and diligently the task that has been entrusted to me in this inquiry, not to say or do anything that directly or indirectly could attack the truth or justice or may limit the freedom of witnesses. I also swear to preserve professional confidentiality with regard to all those matters which I may learn during the inquiry and not to speak of them except with the officials of the tribunal named in this process. I also swear not to accept any gift that might be offered me because of this present process. May God assist me and these sacred scriptures on which I place my hand. I now call upon Father Paul Crosby, notary to the Dawson Inquiry, to take his oath. I, Reverend Paul Crosby, parish priest, promoter of justice of the inquiry on life and heroic virtues, as well as on the fame of holiness and signs of the servant of God, Father William Doyle, professed priest of the Society of Jesus, swear to fulfill faithfully and diligently the task that has been entrusted to me in this inquiry, not to say or do anything that directly or indirectly could attack the truth or justice or may limit the freedom of witnesses. I also swear to preserve professional confidentiality with regard to all those matters which I may learn during the inquiry and not to speak of them except to the officials of the tribunal named in this process. I also swear not to accept any gift that might be offered me because of this present process. May God assist me and these sacred scriptures on which I place my hand. I now call upon Father John Hogan, postulator for the cause, to take his oath. I, Reverend John Hogan, postulator of the cause of beatification and canonization of the servant of God, Father William Doyle, professed priest of the Society of Jesus, Swear faithfully to carry out the task that has been entrusted to me, not to say or do anything that directly or indirectly should harm justice or that could limit the freedom of witnesses. I also swear to preserve professional confidentiality with regard to all those issues which I may learn during the inquiry and not to speak of them except with the officials of the tribunal named in this process. I also swear not to accept any gift that might be offered me because of this present process. May God assist me 
and these sacred scriptures on which I place my hand. The notions of God's kingdom on earth as in heaven and our obligation to work for that kingdom are central points of today's liturgy. Of course, the Feast of Christ the King always occurs in November, coming as it does at the end of the church's year. November too begins with our celebration of all saints and our commemoration of the faithful departed. In a way, the opening of the cause of the servant of God for the Willie Doyle touches upon all these elements. Father Doyle was certainly conscious of the need for everyone, the baptized, the professed, and the ordained, to work for the kingdom of God. Indeed, during his novitiate in this diocese, he signed an oath offering his life, as Father John has mentioned. His less known quality as a spiritual director saw him encourage many towards priesthood and religious life. Indeed, by way of example, he was instrumental in getting Sister Maria Dwyer, a Cork woman and daughter of a local businessman, to return from Belgium and establish a poor Clare monastery there, a monastery that is still going well, thank God. The heroic desire of Doyle to serve and promote God's kingdom found ultimate expression on the battlefield when he was ministering to soldiers, some of whom were Catholic, others Anglican. After bringing one to safety, he returned to the line of fire and was killed ministering to others, as Father John has just said. Pope Francis often talks of the church as being a field hospital. It is an image that is entirely appropriate here. Indeed, we are told that Doyle was nominated for the Victoria Cross for bravery, but it was not granted due to he being, as an article in the Irish Times put it a few weeks ago, suffering from the three disadvantages of being Catholic, a priest, and dare I say it in present company, a Jesuit. Since his death in 2017, his, sorry, 1917, his cult, or following, has remained strong and indeed widespread. Since announcing today's ceremony a, one, a month ago, I have been struck by the extent of that cult. Doyle's name comes up in the most unexpected of places. Indeed, my favorite story of him is contained in Alfred O'Rahilly's biography of him, of him, written almost 100 years ago. After Doyle's death, his father's house was being burgled, and Doyle's father was powerless to stop it. The burglar came across the photograph of Father Doyle on the dresser and asked who it was. Doyle's father said that it was his son who lost his life as an army chaplain. The burglar responded that he knew him. He was a soldier 
and Doyle was his chaplain, he said. He said that Doyle was a good man, dropped his bag of stolen property and walked out empty-handed. Perhaps a case of Doyle's first miracle. <laughs> Indeed, a recent article in the tablet by Melanie McDonough quotes the journalist Sir Philip Gibbs, who described Doyle speeding all day, hither and thither, over the battlefield like an angel of mercy. His words of absolution were the last word heard on earth by many an Irish lad that day, and the stooping figure of a priest and father filled the glance of many in their agony. Another tribute to him came from a member of the Orange Order, who said that, quote, we could not possibly agree with his religious opinions, but we simply worshipped him for other things. He did not know the meaning of fear. He was as ready to risk his life, to take a drop of water to a wounded Ulster man, as to assist men of his own faith and regiment. Gibbs interestingly called him a martyr for charity. Patrick Kenny's more recent book, To Raise the Fallen, provides further account, scholarship, and indeed inspiration. It is, I think, remarkable that so much has been written over the years and the demand for such is still strong today. Doyle has something to say to our time. When bridge builders are scarce, nationality, creed, and political belief to him were secondary and subservient to being a child of God. Indeed, one can see so many of the themes of Pope Francis' papacy in Doyle's life, charity, generosity, bridge building, and brotherhood, fratelli tutti. On the 1st of November, we celebrated the Feast of All Saints, a celebration of those whose statues and pictures adorn our churches and homes. But that feast also commemorates the more Pauline interpretation of sainthood, those who led good and holy lives and are now with God in heaven. We have known those Pauline saints. They handed on the faith to ourselves, they worshipped here and in every church. They suffered, they offered, they inspired, they prayed, and they loved. There can be no doubt that Doyle is one of those Pauline saints. It is inconceivable that the God of love and Father of all mercies would not be moved by his heroism to those who suffered and his determination to bring absolution and comfort to those who were dying in muddy and bloodied battlefields. The canonized saints are somewhat different. Their cause has been tried and tested by the church, and miracles have been attested too. This evening, we begin the cause for canonization of Father Willie Doyle. We cannot but be moved at his story. We are inspired by his faith, we are encouraged by his generosity and witness, and we pray that he will soon be counted among those whom we publicly venerate and implore. Whether it will be successful or not, well, we cannot know. We can only hope. In the meantime, Doyle's charity, generosity, and evangelical zeal have something to offer ourselves. His regard, compassion, Sacrifice and witness to all who are suffering, regardless of nationality or creed, is still, unfortunately, a lesson needed for our time. We pray that one day we shall count him among the canonized saints and enjoy his intercession on our behalf. You might join with me then in praying the prayer for the beatification and canonization of the servant of God, Father Doyle, which is on your booklet. Eternal Father, your priest, Father William Doyle, offered his life as a sacrifice to your love. With zeal for the salvation of souls, he sought to raise the fallen and conceal the, console the brokenhearted. Amid the horrors of war, he was a servant of your grace and an advocate for peace and reconciliation. Teach us to imitate his love for you and his heroic devotion to your service. 
If it is your will that he should be venerated among the saints of your church, make known by miracles and favors the glory he enjoys in your presence. Trusting in your merciful goodness, graciously grant us, through his intercession, the grace for which we ask. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Just before the Salve Regina, a word of thanks to all of you who have joined us in the cathedral this afternoon, and indeed through the webcam and recordings also. A particular thanks to my brother bishops who have joined us this evening. They supported the cause of Father Doyle when the petition was being made to Rome, and that was very much appreciated. We're all delighted to have Father Doyle's family here amongst us this evening. We would like to think that you'll be back again shortly in the not too distant future for progress on the cause. Our thanks too to the Father Willie Doyle Association and the postulator Father Hogan for bringing us thus far. My thanks to all who assisted at the altar and particularly to the parish choir who added very much to our celebration of Vespers. They are here every Sunday. They were here again this morning and we're all very much proud and indebted to them. Thank you. Master of Ceremonies has just reminded me that in my zeal to emulate Father Doyle's asceticism, I forgot to mention to you that there are refreshments in St. Mary's School immediately afterwards. The easiest way of getting there is around that side of the cathedral and through the gate. You're all very welcome. 